Hello guys and welcome back to Fabos TV. Today we're looking at the Blast Furnace encounter in the Blackrock Foundry from recent raid testing. Yes. On the beta. On Heroic as well. On Heroic as well. Lots of things. But yeah, this fight is very, very interesting. It like consists of like, mo like the whole first phase is trying to get the boss out of a furnace and then you just beat him up and like the third phase, the second phase, you're trying to act. You spend half the fucking fight trying to activate the boss before yep. you can get to him. It's a really interesting fight though. There's quite a lot going on like in terms of there's lots of different types of ads. You've got to know the priority for the ads. You've got to know what all the ads do and it's there's a lot going on. It's really yeah, good. It's not really, I wouldn't say it's a complicated fight. Um, it's just more you need to know about every single ad and how the, every single ad works. Sounds quite complicated to me. Yeah, it's actually a bit complicated. <laughs> but anyway, as we do with all these videos, let's go straight into it and let's talk about all the mechanics. And of course, we'll start off with phase one. So the objective really in phase one is to, as Alex said, get the boss out. And you need to do this by damaging uh, heat regulators, which is on the left and right hand side of the furnace. And the way that you do that is with bombs. And you get the bombs from the furnace engineer. And now this engineer, he spawns periodically. And what he'll do, there's two ways of getting bombs off of him. When he dies, he'll drop like a little crate of bombs. And you'll click it. And then you get like a, like a 10 second debuff on yourself. And after which you'll do, ex like you'll explode around you and do some AOE damage. And um, which will hurt other players around you. However, if you're right next to the blast furnace, like the little heat regulators on the side of the door, they'll just explode. Also, you can hit your extra action button, which is pretty snazzy. And that'll get rid of the bomb as well. So it's kind of similar to the way the spoils bombs sort of work. It would detonate once you um, hit the extra action button. But he also throws them on you as well. So you've got to keep... You can't just say, oh, I'm not dealing with bombs. Yep. You get, the, the engineer raid. will choose whether or yep. not you're Pretty much with anyone the in the raid apart from the tank will be targeted by the bombs from the engineers. So if, if the idea is once a bomb is thrown on you, you immediately run over to the furnace and blow yourself up. But it does deal damage to yourself and other players. And multiple players might have bombs on them the exact same time. And because you need to blow up both sides, you need to kind of split your raid into two groups just so you can do this. Because otherwise, if you work on one side, pretty much everyone's just going to blow each other up. Yeah, there's so going to be too many bombs yeah. in one place and everyone's, yeah, everyone's going to exactly blow up. The engineers will also attempt to repair the heat regulator. Really, really easy. It can be interrupted, but pretty much they'll die before they even get there. They haven't got a lot of health, and pretty much these are going to be your priority, just so you can get the bombs out of the bag right at the end. Um, they'll also do like a chain lightning effect, so you, it's pretty a good idea to remain slightly spread. The room's huge at this point in the fight. You have loads of room to play around with it, so it's not a big deal. So that's all well and good. Engineers drop bombs, blow up the side of the furnace. Very, very good. Very easy. That's, and that's it. That's all you have to do to get into phase two. However, there's a lot of other things going on in phase one, unfortunately, that we all need to look at. So as you guys might have noticed, the blast furnace itself is doing an AOE pulse in the entire room. It hits for around 90k, but there is sort of like a heat meter up in the corner that actually indicates how much heat like, the furnace has. And it appears, well, at least it, it seems like it, the higher the heat is, the more damage the blast does. It doesn't appear to affect any other mechanics. It's not listed in the dungeon journal or anything like that, but that's just how it appears to work. Um, and the heat will go up by itself, but it'll also go up by these uh, operators that spawn and start pulling on chains and... Yeah, the bellow operators, yeah. the giant, like, ogre I don't know, I don't know what the something. fuck they're doing, but they're, they're, they're somehow making the heat go up. Um, you just need to make sure that you kill these guys. They're not that high up on the priority because they do have quite a lot of health. You still want to make sure that you get the engineers down. Um, but these guys are something that you do need to deal with and you do need to switch with. So apart from the bellows operators and the furnace engineers, you also have another ad. You have the security guards, and they're pretty simple. All you do is pick them up as a tank, and they don't really do that much. They only have, like, one ability, which is called defense. And what this will do is place, like, a like a whole zone around them, a little AoE circle that will make them and any of their allies, so any of the other bad ads, immune to all damage, which is pretty shit. So when this does happen, um, they can't actually move. They're completely still, so you can't sort of move them away from any mobs that are inside it. What you need to do is just knock them back. Pretty yeah. much that's the only way of dealing with this mechanic. Or just tanking them, like, far away. And then when they do the defense ability, you could just leave them on the spot. I suppose. It's because they're, sort of just, they're just stood there doing nothing. But really, you kind of want to, like, cleave these down and AOE them down. And, of course, while they're casting this, they are immune. So you need to make sure that you do knock them back and just AOE them down with the rest of the mobs. Now, also, you may have noticed there is a mini boss right at the start of the fight as well. And this is the guy that you pretty much want to blow up right at the very, very start. He hasn't got that much health, so you can kill him pretty quickly. Um, 
and that is Foreman Feldspar. So what he'll do is he'll do something called uh, Pyroclasm. This is a debuff that when it expires will spawn a circle underneath you that will start doing ticking fire damage. Um, so if you do get the debuff, make sure you move out of the raid ideally as close to the walls as possible so like a bit of the circle is actually going into the walls so it's yeah. like gives you as much room as possible he'll also do unavoidable aoe damage to the raid and that's pretty much it he also does even more unavoidable aoe damage to the raid he does like ticking fire he's damage just to a people. bastard get he, rid of him yeah he's a bit annoying just kill yeah, him as soon as you possibly he, he can. doesn't last long at all so it's absolutely fine but that's all it is to phase one. You just need to make sure you block that guy right at the very, very start. Make sure the security guards aren't doing their immune circle on top of any like important mobs, such as the operators or the engineers. Try not to die. Make sure you split up your raid. Make sure you use the bombs on the furnaces on the left and the right-hand side, on the heat regulators. And once both the heat regulators have been killed, you'll then move into phase two. So as soon as phase two starts, the furnace explodes, the boss comes out of it, and you're like, right, Time to kill the boss. Not yet. Nope, he's not nope. ready for you to fight him just yet. Not because yet. four horrible primal elementalists come along and they start channeling on the boss and it makes him immune to damage. And, like, he doesn't do anything. He just stands there. So you got to get rid of the elementalists in order to activate the boss. However, they are also immune to damage. And the only way that you can damage them is by blowing up one of the slag elementals, one of the new ads, on top of them. So the slag elementals will slowly start spawning throughout the fight. And themselves, they don't really have too many mechanics, but the one that is most important is fixate. The moment they spawn, they'll fixate on a random target, and they will stay on that target until either they die or he dies. Yeah. So that person needs to make sure that they run over and stand on top of one of these elementalists, and everyone needs to nuke down the slag elemental as soon as they possibly can. While the slag elemental is focusing their target, they will spam something called burn. This is interruptible. It's quite a long cast. Doesn't do a lot of damage. If it does go through, not a big deal. It'll help out your healers if you do interrupt it, though. And then once they do reach 0% health, they are supposed to do like an aoe around them that sort of does damage to the entire raid as well it wasn't yeah i'm not sure what that was all about um but they will go dormant when they die they don't actually die yeah exactly they're not dead at all they keep respawning as well later on we'll explain that in a sec but yeah they'll just fall on the floor they've had a bit too much to drink they're just out of the fight but they do make it so the um Primal Elementalists can now be damaged for a short period of time because their shields are only down for a certain amount of time. So at this point, you go full on nuke mode. You don't want to pop bloodlust or anything like that. They don't have a huge amount of health. You do have enough time in this window in order to kill them just by damaging them. But you do have to switch to them. You've got to make sure that you really do focus these ads. Also, while this is going on, security guards are still going to spawn. And there'll also be a new ad called a fire cooler. Now, ideally, you want one tank to pick up the security guards and just keep them out the way and people can just dot them and just deal damage to them whenever they can, but they're not a high priority target. However, the fire callers really, really need to die. They're basically just full of casts. However, you can interrupt them and, and stun them and everything like that. So it's very, very important that you do prevent them from casting their spells. One of them is Cauterize Wound, which will heal any target for 10% of its maximum health. This goes off on an elementalist. Not good. Yeah. So you need to make sure that it doesn't cast that. They'll do a Lava Burst to a random target doesn't matter doesn't hit hard they do however have a debuff called volatile fire this is a debuff that once it expires it will deal damage to everyone within eight yards and it does hit hard so you need to make sure if you do have this debuff that you move out of the raid you don't stand near people um and these guys will also immediately energize a slag elemental to full health so literally if the slag elemental is dormant and has no energy boom 100 percent energy come back start being a pain in the ass so the idea is that you do kill these fire callers so they don't bring more elementals into the fight because you only really only ever need one up you don't need more than one you only need one to kill one elementalist and you got to so, remember that the uh, slag elementals they do continue to spawn so it isn't just like oh we got to make sure we revive that so we can make sure that we use him because a new one's going to come exactly in so towards the end of it if these are going off like say you're on the last elementalist the primal elementalist um you might even have four of them up if you've been really really unlucky so these uh, fire callers are very very high priority in order to get rid of them just because all of their abilities are pretty much a pain in the ass but of course if a primal elementalist has their shield down you've got to say sorry i can't really deal with you maybe if you can have them on a focus so you can focus interrupt um their their heal so make sure you don't primal elementalist doesn't get their heal or anything like that but you've really got to focus these elementalists once their shields are down and ultimately it's just aoe the fire caller on top of the elementalists make sure the slag elementals die at the right time and on the right elementalist which means the person that has the fixate needs to move to the right one we just move from right to left i mean you can move from left to right if you want it doesn't really matter and pretty much the whole raid can stack at this point and just make sure they do actually get the erupt debuff from the fire callers they do move out while the tank has the two security guards out of the raid 
or well, however many security guards you have, just make sure they're out the raid and just kill them off slowly. They're not a big deal. And once you have finally killed all the elementalists, phase three will start. And it's important to note that in phase three, ads will no longer spawn apart from the slag elementals that have already existed. Yeah, they seem to somehow, we're not 100% sure how, but we they, believe it's the blast. Yeah, we think it might be the blast because the, the furnace is then blasting again in phase three. It stops doing it yeah. in phase three, but in phase three, it's just like, yeah, I'm going to go crazy and it, start blasting yeah, again. It, the elementals just kind of come back. It's yeah, it's it, beta. It's, it's kind of a bit well, up in the air. I think it's that the blast gives them 20 energy every time it, like, it does yeah last it, exactly yeah <laughs> so and once they get 100 they come back to life so the idea is that you kind of need to do phase two really quick anyway but just to reduce the amount of elementalists yeah that you'll have in phase three but yeah you'll have these um these horrible slag elementals they're just going to be throughout phase two but otherwise you you'll probably have a couple of security guards going in you might even have some of the um fire callers going into phase three just make sure you get rid of all of those ads as soon as you possibly can maybe the security guards aren't as important maybe dot them but then go straight on to the boss so as we said in phase three, the boss does come and now you, you finally get to fucking kill him after two phases of trying to actually see him. Yeah. Um, the blast will continue hit the raid through the um, blast furnace. Let's keep doing that. The boss has an ability called melt, which will target a random enemy. And then a couple of seconds later, it will spawn a defile style um, AOE circle. Standard, you take ticking damage. However, it appears at first glance that it works exactly the same as Defile. The more people are in it, the quicker it will grow. It doesn't work like that at all. It just slowly grows anyway, caps out, and then will remain that size. It won't grow any bigger. And we're not sure if they do despawn. Maybe they don't. Um, but if they do, it's going to take you quite a long time before they do despawn. And they do grow quite big. So the idea of this phase, really, um, of course, there's other mechanics you need to deal with, but you need to make sure that these are as far away from the raid as possible and that you're not obstructing certain areas of the room. We didn't really have that much time in this phase, so we didn't manage to perfect that. But what you would do is that you'd either start on the far left-hand corner of the room right at the top and work your way around to the, towards the right-hand side or vice versa. Yeah, exactly. But that's ultimately all you need to do with that mechanic. Just make sure you don't get hit by it. Now, the other mechanics that are in play are pretty much focused at your tanks, and they both work off each other. So these two tank debuffs, they are... It's a little bit complicated, but it's quite simple once you kind of get your head around it. They're called Tempered, and they're called Heat. And we'll talk about Heat first. Now, Heat is very simply a stacking debuff on the tank that increases they just deal um, fire damage to them so just ticking fire it's just damage. ticking fire damage so what you want to do once again normal tank debuff is that you taunt on x right you can keep it off each other at two however there is another mechanic in the in this called tempered and really it should kind of it kind of works with heat it's the way it works is works with heat because all tempered does is increase the amount of damage you take from heat and it does stack up but it will only ever stack up to the maximum applications of heat. So say you got three heat stacks, you have three tempered stacks. Say you went up to 20 heat stacks, you got to 20 tempered stacks. However, say you only ever stayed on two heat stacks, tempered will never go above two. So really what you want to do is try and keep this tempered stack as low as you possibly can by making sure you taunt on low stacks because tempered increases the amount of damage you take from heat. So it's it's pretty fucking. But it vicious. won't affect the amount of damage taken from heat if heat is a lower stack than tempered. Exactly. So say you're on three tempered stacks and you got one heat stack applied to you, it won't increase tempered stack because the heat stack is on one. Whereas if the heat stack went above three, so it went above the tempered level that it's at at the moment, it will then increase the tempered stack. So basically, if you can keep your stacks low, if you can keep your heat stacks low, you'll take less damage in the long run. It's so the, pretty much the, how probably it works. the best way to do it would be to have. Both tanks get three stacks initially, and then after that point, always taunt on two. Yeah. And then that way, tempered won't affect you at all. Yeah, exactly. More or less. Um, but that's all the tanks need to do. So it's, it sounds a it little sounds, bit... It sounds... Okay, right. <laughs> taunt on two. <laughs> taunt on three initially. And then, then taunt, taunt on two. Taunt on two. Okay, that's probably the best we can tell you. <laughs> um, <laughs> fucking hell. But that's but how that mechanic works. Either way, that's the fight, really. Like, we didn't actually manage to no, kill we didn't it. No, we didn't have enough time to kill it. We didn't have enough pulls to get into phase three. But ultimately, the fight, yeah, it's there's a lot to it. But it's very repetitive. There's not a lot of RNG. It's just literally learning the fight phase by phase. And I love this encounter. I've it's got a very a, unique yeah, encounter. Yeah. I really love the way they've done this. I think the design of it was really, really good. Um, and yeah, looking forward to, uh, again, do this on Mythic. It Some of the really changes good. on Mythic are pretty crazy. So yeah, so, uh, it should be good. Yeah. But thank you very much for watching, guys. If you did enjoy this little preview, then please do drop us down a like. And of course, there will be an official guide coming out once we do hit live servers, once this Wall of the Drainer is actually released. And uh, we'll see you on the live stream. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much.